Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Herculean Homeschooling. I'm Sarah, homeschool mama of six. And for those of you who haven't seen my channel before, three of my six kiddos have some kind of special need. Um, I have a son with a processing disorder, a son with autism, and a daughter with a communication disorder. But with my other kids, two of them are actually gifted and talented. I know some people uh, consider gifted and talented special needs because it is a special need. Um, to in the public school system. For the purpose of this video, I'm counting them as two separate things. So the gifted and talented on one side and then uh, special ed as in you need extra services for different things like speech or uh, something like that. I'm considering them two different things. Again, just for this video, you know, you can do with that what you want. <laughs> but anyway, so one of the things that I get asked a lot, and I know it's really hard, is when you have children on both sides of this big spectrum, where we have the gifted and talented on one side and the sped or special needs on the other side, how you can homeschool everybody together and not have people feel left out or feel like they're not as strong in different areas. And, and you know, it can get really hard because you want to balance people's feelings and making sure that they know that they're growing and not keep some people back so that you don't hurt this kid's feelings. Um, it can be a very delicate balance trying to work that all in. So this video, I am talking about how we work that all out in our family with our six kids having three on the sped spectrum and then two in the gifted and talented. And the last one, he's only three. So who knows <laughs> with him where that's going to go. So we were at a family camp this year and it was super fun. The theme was like a circus theme. And so they actually had us tell each other different gifts that we saw in each other in our family. And then we had to come up with a circus. So if we were to be a circus, our family, who would be what parts? So we made this. Don't judge my drawing too bad. I know that I'm not an artist. And that's just not one of my gifts, and it's okay. Um, so this is the different members of our family. So obviously we have my husband, who is the ringleader, and we talked about him being the ringleader uh, because, you know, he's the one that provides for us and makes sure that we have this house and everything. I got to be the juggler because I'm juggling everybody's schedules and all the different balls in the air, right, that you got to keep going. Oh, my son that has autism, he loves animals. Just he, we call him the animal whisperer because he's so, so good with all animals all over the world. And uh, so he got to do like the dog and cat trainer. Um, and then my daughter that has a communication disorder, she loves clothing and fashion. And so she got to be like the, uh, what you would call them, you know, the girls with like the plumes in their hair. I don't know <laughs> where they are. It's been a long time since I've been to the circus. And so we were able to tell each other the different gifts that we saw in one another and then kind of figure out where we were in the circus and how you can't just have a circus with just a ringleader or you can't have a circus with just one girl on a horse. Like that's not fun, that's not a circus. So I would highly recommend if you have different kids in those different you know, spectrums and you're having a hard time kind of figuring out how, how it all works when some kids are a little more advanced, even if they're younger in some areas or, or whatever your system is there, to talk about the different gifts that you have and tell each other in your family the different gifts that you see in them and then see how all those different gifts work together. And that has made a huge difference in our homeschooling. So when it comes to our actual homeschooling of the different subjects, there is stuff that we all do together, like our history and our science. It doesn't matter if you're the three-year-old or the almost 12-year-old. We are all doing the same history and we are all doing the same science together. That just keeps it easy for me. It keeps it easy for the kids that that's just something we do together. We like to use Bookshark, which is a faith neutral company. It is a lot of read alouds and not as many worksheets. It's literature based. And so we get to read our history together. And then there are like stickers that we'll put in the timeline book together. And then we do science. We all do the experiments together. And so that makes it super simple for me and for my kids to no matter where they are, on their spectrum of what we're doing. We're all doing that together. And then we do our own math and our own language arts and readers. And I typically use different programs for each of my kids for math. For example, I only have two kids. My oldest two use teaching textbooks, and I have one doing Matthew C, one doing Math Seeds, and the youngest just is doing like a workbook that I got at like half price books or something. So 
they're all very different programs. And that has really helped us to where if my younger ones are ready to do some of that same material that the older ones are doing, you know, we just talk about it's a different program, they're on their own path, and you're on your own path with your different programs. And so that's how we kind of avoid the hurt feelings or the, you know, well, he's younger, and why is he already better than me at this? Um, just avoiding that. Reading is a little different because that's very obvious, right? If you have a really strong reader and then a struggling reader and they're very different ages, you know, so in my family, my son that has autism is my second oldest, and he's still reading. He's 10, um, and he's still reading at like an early kindergarten level, and then I have my six-year-old who's already reading at a late first, early second grade level. Um, so, and they know, they know that the six-year-old is a higher reading level than the 10-year-old. I mean, that's just, they're going to pick up on that. You know, kids are really smart. Um, and I think it'd be really easy for kids to get down on themselves when they see younger siblings or kids younger than them doing things that they are not able to do yet. And so that's where we talk a lot about not comparing, look at your different gifts. Yes, this child might be reading at a higher level than you right now, and that's okay. Because look at what you're able to do here already, and look at how high you are in this category, or look at your gifts with animals, and this kid is, doesn't care, you know, about animals. And, and so we have our different abilities, and, and that's okay. It's okay, you know, but that's something that's not easy. You know, we, we, we don't want people to be better than us, but we got to learn real fast that there's always somebody better than we are. So when it comes to reading language arts, um, I think being very open about it is important. Like my son with autism, he knows exactly where he is. He knows that we're working on it. And we talk a lot about this is what you're reading today. Yes, so look at what you were reading last year and look how much farther you've already come. And just really focusing on our own personal paths. And even though we may be schooling together, we each still have our own path that we need to be following. And that's one of the things that I love about homeschooling is that we have a much smaller ratio of teacher to student so that we can focus on the different needs that our kids have and be able to cater to those needs and to really help them not compare to each other, um, to just look at themselves and are we doing better today than we were yesterday? Or are we doing better today than we were a month ago? Or if you need to, like I need to with some of my special needs kids, are we doing better today than we were a year ago? So it is also really important in our family to be reminding my children that are the gifted and talented side that Yes, they have been gifted in those gifts, and we are going to help that flourish and grow, and that's awesome. Um, but that doesn't mean that their sibling that's on the fed spectrum isn't doing a great job, too. You know, so it's just we try to be very, very open about it. All of my kids know the special needs that we have in our family. All of my kids know the gifts that we have in our family. Um, and we really try to pour into each other those gifts that we see instead of talking about all the things that we don't have. This topic has just been on my heart a lot lately as I've been thinking about all these different families that have reached out to me and asked, asking about how I make that work and how we do that and, and how they want to be able to help their gifted and talented kids grow, but they don't want to make their special ed kids feel bad that they're not doing that and they don't want their gifted and talented kids to be held back because of their special ed kids or they don't want they're gifted and talented kids to feel like they're better or worse or either way, you know, like uh, it's just, again, it's such a fine balance. But if you appreciated this video, if you'd like to see other videos about homeschooling kids with special needs or gifted and talented, please give this video a thumbs up, a like down below, and comment as well. I love hearing from y'all. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in some more things that I wish that I had known before homeschooling children with special needs, you can watch this video right here. And also, please go ahead and hit this button so that you can subscribe to my channel. Until next time.